a thought that's kind of um, it's sort of out of you know the the original boundaries book that John Townsend and I wrote many years ago. Um, we had a section in there called the Ten Laws of Boundaries, and basically, what that was was it's a lot of principles by which boundaries operate. Okay, one of them, for example, is the law of sowing and reaping. All right. Well, what happens? You know, there's a there's there's built into the universe one of the most amazing things that God designed for our benefit is something called the law of sowing and reaping. So what does that mean? It means when you sow, and the metaphor is a seed, right? If I, you know, put into something, okay, if I sow to something, then I will reap the consequences of what I've sown. I started to say reap the benefits, right? Well, we are going to reap benefits if we sow good things. And so if we sow love and honesty and responsibility and hard work and all that, there's a lot of good stuff that comes back, you know, from that, right? Okay, that's the way it works. If I if I sow, you know, hard work and exercise, I reap a better, more healthy body. If I work hard on, you know, whatever my job is and I get a paycheck, all right. Well, this law of sowing and reaping isn't, biased works both directions positive and negative if i sow to laziness and i just sleep in all the time or if i sow to you know drug addiction or you know being mean to people and all that it's going to come back that's what i'm going to reap you know lots of people notice this principle you know you got people that call it karma and you know, well, what goes around comes around, and oh, I'll catch up to him. And you know, you hear all the popular ways of describing this, but it's a law. So that's one law of boundaries. And what a boundary does is you set a limit and say, okay, you are free to choose that. Okay, if you're gonna if you're gonna continue to be on drugs, that's your choice. I don't want to reap what you're sowing. You should reap what you're sowing. And your drug use, the consequences of that should fall in your yard. That's sowing and reaping. I'm not sowing that. I don't want to reap the consequences of your drug addiction. That's your problem, and you've got to deal with it. So I'm not going to bail you out anymore. Okay, that's a simple, that's one of the laws of boundaries that we, we built, you know, the system around. Comes right out of the Bible, comes right out of the research. Those are, you know. Very, very clear. Here's another law that I want to mention today. It's called the law of respect. The law of respect. Now, of course, we think of respect as being a good thing. Always, we want to respect everybody. <laughs> Until. <laughs> oh, yeah, I respect people. Yeah, sure. I've got a lot of respect for people. Well, we do a lot of times until that person sets a boundary, right? So here's what's really interesting. Everybody loves the message of boundaries. Of course we do. You know, we find out, gosh, it's okay to say no to abuse. It's okay to say no to doing things that, you know, I don't purpose to do and nobody else can control my life and they can't tell me what I got to do with, you know, my, my time or, my resources or any of that that i'm in control of my oh i love that i'm going to say no to all these control freaks yay i love it i got boundaries wonderful we're all for that that's why you know <laughs> the boundaries champion right for you i want you to have limits and we love the message until we don't <laughs> and here's when we don't a lot of times we don't like the message of boundaries when we're on the other end of it when somebody says no to us, right? That's hard. Come on, guys, be honest. Who likes to hear no? I don't like to hear it. But just because we don't like something doesn't mean it's not good for us. Okay? In fact, one of my favorite verses in Hebrews chapter 12, I think. I think it is. 
might be 10, I think it's 12. It says all discipline for the moment seems not to be joyful, but sorrowful. Doesn't feel good, it feels bad. But in the end, it produces the peaceful, excuse me, the peaceful fruit of righteousness. Okay, so what is discipline? Well, discipline is a lot of stuff. But one of the things that discipline certainly is, is the word no. Right? So when we are practicing a discipline, in order to practice that discipline, there's a lot of stuff that we want that we have to say no to. I mean, discipline and no are kind of like, you know, those two words are like, you know, secret lovers. They're just like intertwined together in a thousand different ways. They're like blood brothers or sisters. Or you can't have discipline without the word no. Well, we can have uh, interpersonal discipline. When we discipline one another, we say no to certain behaviors, okay? I don't know about you, I hope this is true of you, but I need to be disciplined by others. Sometimes I need for them to say, no, Henry, that wasn't a good way to say what you just said. Or, you know, that was kind of selfish or that was kind of rude. Or that was kind of mean or impatient or that wasn't very loving. See, sometimes we need to hear Somebody set a limit on us because anyone that is not disciplined by the people that supposedly love them are not really loved fully. But here's the thing. When somebody does say no to us about our behavior, the law of respect says, if I like having boundaries, I've got to also like receiving other people's boundaries. So when they tell me no about my behavior, if they're right, I mean, come on, I'm not saying do what all the lunatics in the world accuse you of. Some people are nuts, you know. They'll try to tell you and judge you and tell you you're wrong when you're not. You were this. No, that's not, you know, but, you know, come on. One of my pastors one time said, <clears throat> look, if one, pours, one person calls you a horse, then you look at them and say, eh, I think you're crazy. If five people call you a horse, go buy a saddle. You know, we start getting the same input or, or we get input from a trusted source. Then we got to listen to it. All right, so here's another one. How about this? You're not doing anything wrong at all. You just want something from somebody. I want your time. I want you to do this for, oh, can you come pick me up? Oh, can you lend me a hand here? And I might have given a bunch of stuff to you, right? And I might kind of be a little bit of a not free giver and think, well, I gave you a bunch of stuff, then you kind of owe me a favor here. I mean, I've done, look at all I've done for you, right? And what we want to do is we don't respect people's freedom from us. We don't respect their ability, right, privilege, blessing, honor to be able to say no to us. So here's our question for today's little piece of woodshed <laughs> i don't like what i'm saying today either if you're if you're feeling like you know i'm getting on your case i don't like it either i'm listening to myself with you going eh, i hate this let's love people's nose okay let's love their nose when they say no to us say oh i'm gonna miss you oh that makes me sad oh i was hoping you could come oh bummer i needed you to do that for me but see I'm not making them bad for it. I'm just expressing my little mini grief cycle I'm going through because I lost something I wanted. That's okay. Be sad when somebody says no to you, but just don't make them bad for saying no to you. Big, big difference in sadness and badness. Big difference. And then you got to remember the hardest one of all. 
is when somebody says no to something good that you're wanting for them. Let's say that they are addicted and you set a limit and you offer them and say, I'm not going to enable you with your addiction anymore, but I will help you get some treatment if you'll admit you got a problem. And they say, no, no, I don't have a problem. And they continue in denial. They just said no to your help, okay? And they've said yes to continue in their sin. I just said a word that people don't like to hear. It's a good word. I mean, it's a word we need to hear. Sin means that we're wrong, we're, we're missing the mark, right? What we're doing is not good, okay? So they say, no, I'm gonna keep doing this. Sometimes it's hard for us to give people the freedom to say no to the light. And you know, it's interesting, God lets people do that. God respects people's freedom to say no to him. Now they will live with the consequences as we all do. Every time we say no to the light, every time I say no to something that's good for me, I will live and reap the consequences of that. But God says it's free to do that. And you know, a lot of times parents, I'm going to speak to you parents, especially as your kids get older, you just don't like to see them live out their freedom because they might make some choices you don't like. And that's tough. It's tough. But remember, if you're not bailing them out of those choices, they're going to start to feel the consequences of those. And as the story of the prodigal shows us, look what he did. He said, okay, that's what you want to do. Go ahead. I don't want you to do it. I'm sure they had a lot of conversation that's not in there. Why would you do that? You got a great deal here. Why would you go out there? Well, okay, go ahead. Or the rich young ruler. Jesus told him, what's it going to take? And he told him he didn't like it. And he walked away sad. Sometimes we got to accept people's no. So the law of respect means we respect people's freedom. It's a good thing. You want it, you also got to give it. Okay, there's today's reminder. So whose no are you trying to punish them for or control them for? Well, then just go apologize. You know, the other when you said no to me, I kind of like pouted and put a guilt trip on you and or I fought you and I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have done that. Just try that, it might help.